a sea of flowers and the richness of aromas. Yet the meadow, forest and the floodplain of the river hide many things you won't immediately notice. The history of the nature of this land is a struggle with time, the forces of nature and invaders. Various inhabitants find shelter here, and the most terrible predator want to claim these lands, namely man. But nature didn't yield to them and retained its virgin pristine state. The Mezin National Park is a true land of natural forests and lakes. If you venture into the backwoods of the Chernihiv Oblast, you can hear the ringing of scythes above the Desna River. Smell the aroma of herbs in the meadows, see horses grazing under large oaks and willows, wander through the forest and pick some mushrooms and berries. If you climb the slope of the Puzer Hill, you will see an unexpected incredible landscape of bright emerald carpets, as if they were laced with sapphires, and hear the sounds of the floodplain and Oxbow lakes. This is truly a mess in Switzerland. It is crossed by the winding watercourse of the ancient Desna River, the rushing waters of which to this day flow as rapidly as they did in the past, with cable ferries connecting the two banks. Wherever you look, you'll see the vast expanses of virgin nature and the lands under the care of the Mezin National Park. When you find yourself in the summer forest of one of the reserves, the Rihlivska Dacha, you involuntarily get the feeling that you're in the realm of the dark and deep gullies and steep slopes of barren day. In the summertime, plants tolerant to shade and those that love moisture replace the primroses that prefer sunlight. If you not look too closely, the multicolored Solomon seal might not be that notable from the outer appearance, but should you dig up its root, you will find the seal that used to predict the future of our ancestors. I'm going to dig up the root without damaging it, so that I can plant it back into the soil. This is how long and thick it is. The plant has an interesting biological feature. Each year of its growth is marked by a specific knot on the root. The number of knots allows one to determine the edge of the perennial and, respectively, how favorable the conditions of the forest are. Although the ancients used to find much more significant meaning in that. In ancient times, when they dug up the root of Solomon's seal, they believed that it could help predict the fate of a person and whether or not it was going to be a year of harvest and wealth. In national ethnos, Solomon's seal is mentioned as the messenger of King Solomon. The violet fruits of Solomon's seal look attractive but are actually poisonous. Many plants choose these methods of their defense and survival. Animals that want to feed on the berries of Solomon's seal have already been taught a lesson from their bitter mistakes, so they will no longer harm the plant by destroying its fruits. The Ortiz pendle is armed with the same defense mechanism. This shrub with bright orange fruits is treacherous. This small tree of shrub grows in our climatic conditions, but its fruits are poisonous, so you need to be very careful when picking them. The color of the fruits sends out a dangerous signal. Hazelwort is also considered a poisonous plant, but can be beneficial with a reasonable dosage and proper use. It is quite suitable in traditional medicine as a diuretic and choleratic agent. Glossy saturated green leaves of hazelwort are not devoid of charm, just like sedge leaves flowing down the forest slopes like curls. This is an unexpected find. It is believed that sedges are inhabitants of swamps and damp meadows. 
As we can see, they can also be found in a mixed forest, but only in one variety, Carex pelosa. Here we can see Carex pelosa, the plant that dominates the territory of Rihlivska dacha. It predominantly occupies slopes and has all the signs of its family, like the triangular stalk and multifaceted hairy leaves. This is the protective reaction of the plant to excessive loss of moisture, which is the secret of stock color preservation. Whenever you come to the forest, the sedge is always green. It gets covered in snow in autumn, and it hibernates like this. One would be very lucky to find a family of chanterelles among deciduous trees, as they feel much more comfortable growing in a mixed or coniferous forest. Mushrooms are abundant in such forests. And how about boletus and aspen mushrooms? Even their names suggest what kinds of environments suit them best. But trees still remain the main inhabitants of the forest, especially those of venerable age. Indeed, many of the old oak trees have survived in the Rychlivska dacha. Centuries-old oak trees are our pride and joy, and they make our park special. There are over 10 oaks on the territory of Rytlivska dacha, the age of which ranges from 300 to 800 years. From the ancient times, our ancestors had special respect for oaks, considering them sacred. They didn't fell them and tried to preserve them, although the forces of nature were merciless specifically to those trees. The reason for that is simple. The crowns of these forest giants rise above the neighboring trees, involuntarily becoming lightning rods and easily combustible wood response to discharges the best. Despite that, the oak trees survive and rise up again to a new life. We are near an oak tree that local people call a hollow. Up to 10 people can hide in its lower expanded part to wait out bad weather. This is a large monumental oak tree. It's about 500 years old. It saw many a historical event in its lifetime. It witnessed the rise of the monastery and its decline and survived through restless and turbulent times. As a reliable guard, the 500-year-old oak tree preserves the memory of the Pustyna Rychlivsky Monastery the foundation of which dates back to the mid-18th century. To survive those tumultuous times or move away from worldly life, the monks of the monastery retreated into an underground cave. Its labyrinths still serve as a heaven for hermits. There are inscriptions here from 1877, 1906 and 1827. 1800. That means that these caves were formed during the 19th century. Monks built them to have shelter during troubled times, wars and natural disasters. When the wooden monastery was burning down, the monks waited out this catastrophe by hiding in the cave's labyrinths. The monastery caves are an H-shaped labyrinth, so it's impossible to get lost in it. According to the doctrines of Christian faith, this number meant restoration and rebirth. The baptistry is usually octagonal, which symbolizes a place of rebirth. Careful, there is a ledge here. This is the lower horizon, where you can see that there are also lower caves. That is, they used to go deeper, but the debris has not yet been excavated. There used to be alcoves here, where the monks took shelter to be aloof to the outside world. The underground labyrinth ends with a small chapel, where monastery services were held from time to time. There was a service every Thursday in honor of Saint Nicholas. Now the tradition only remains in the recollections of the local people. 
A chicken feel the atmosphere of a place of prayer, the breath of history. According to the inscriptions in the caves, you understand that people have helped, continue to help, and will always visit this sanctuary. They will keep coming. The cave maintains a constant temperature that never rises higher than 10 to 12 degrees. In winter, this place provided shelter from the frost, and in the summertime one could enjoy the coolness here. Local inhabitants of the cave, bats, also find shelter here. We went outside and we're going to leave the door open so that the bats have a chance to fly out and be free. Relic plants also remind one of the age of the local region. Ferns still remember the times of the dinosaurs, when they were the size of trees, competing with them. Fifteen species of ferns can be found in the Mesa National Nature Reserve Park. The moist habitat in the gullies and the stream beds contribute to the diversity of this park. Among them, there is the male fern, which is quite unique in the Chernihiv Oblast. Its usual habitat is in the mountains. It is much more common in the Carpathians, on limestone soils. And now we have these species in our national park. The reason is simple. These soils are saturated with carbonate rocks. And another interesting fact is that specific conditions of moisture contribute to the survival and preservation of these species here. The populations of ostrich fern adorn the gullies and stream beds of the national park due to their excessive humidity. Just as all fern-like plants, they don't have flowers and breathe through spores, and the bouquet, surrounded by open leaves of the ostrich fern, and the twigs, where the spores ripen, are not flowers at all. This is the unique feature of ferns, they have two kinds of leaves. This is the bottom of the older gully, where large, wine-glass-shaped bowls can be found. There are two types of leaves, ordinary sterile ones and leaves that carry spores, which contribute to the propagation of ferns. There are also floating ferns in the park. Salvinia natans is a decoration of floodplain lakes and rivers with running water. The rare species of tropical fern is under the protection of the Red Book of Extinction. Here we can see the only tropical fern species that can be found in our water reservoirs. It has a number of biological features. The leaf is divided into three parts, two of which are typical leaves, while the third one resembles a root. But actually, it has not a root. Salvinia is a one-year plant. It winters as a special kind of spore settling on the bottom. By spring, the water fern regrows, decorating the shores of the Desna River, like the plants that create the riverbank strip. Yellow loose strife has yellow flowers that look like bells. They started calling it that for its leaves that resemble those of a willow. The neighboring purple loose strife was called a crying herb for its ability to collect drops of dew or rain and drop them like tears. It's hard not to notice its bright purple flowers on a long spike. Decorating the banks of the river, these marsh plants also reinforce them, contributing to the creation of shallow waters, which become shelters for aquatic organisms. But by the end of summer, both coastal and meadow plants fade and look very different. We must admit that the floral sea is lost until the next spring. Only some rare species continue treating pollinating insects with their nectar. The wonderful flying flowers have no rivals in the world of insects when it comes to colors, so this is not exactly to their benefit, as such eye-catching colors attract many hunters. The natural palette will change very soon. Green will be replaced by bright yellow-red paints that gradually dissolve into black and white. The rhythm of life of all living things will slow down, but that does not mean that nature will cease to amaze us. 
This world will still be full of mysteries and secrets, and the most interesting is still to come. So we invite you to travel with us to discover the unexplored Ukraine in our special program.